This video is sponsored by scdkeys.com where you can get Steam, Origin, and other game keys at a great discount. They also offer Windows 10 keys for a fraction of the cost for your brand new gaming PC. Click the link in the description to learn more. Hey, don't 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 tell my 5820K that I'm hanging out with you guys. She'll get very jealous because your your speed and price performance is just out of this oh Oh, the camera's rolling. Uh, hey guys. So I think we should get into this review, shall we? Yeah, let's just let's just do that. Hey, what is up, guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and I am here with an exciting announcement. It is finally time for Ryzen. In this video, we're going to be talking about some benchmarking numbers, but specifically the AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. We're going to be checking out the 1700X and 1700 in a later video, but what we're going to be doing today is comparing this CPU with what I have on hand. Now, total disclaimer, I'm not one of the biggest YouTubers out there, so I don't have as many resources as these other guys that are on the YouTube space when they come to reviewing technology. So what I have to compare to the 1800X is my i7 5820K. So what I did was overclock my i7-5820K to 4.5 gigahertz and in some of the testing is actually at 4.0 because of stability issues and I couldn't keep it at 4.5 all the time. But what we're going to be doing is keeping it up against this 1800X in a few CPU bound tests. So I plan to do a lot of Ryzen content on this channel, specifically gaming tests and all that sort of stuff. I'm waiting for a couple GPUs to show up to allow me to make some more efficient tests instead of testing them all with my R9 390, which I did, and the numbers didn't really come out the way that I wanted them to. So what we're going to be doing is focusing on the specific numbers of the 1800X and well without further ado which, let me just get those numbers. So right here are the benchmark numbers and we're just going to go down through them real quick. I'm going gamers nexus style on you here with a good old piece of paper. So first up we have Cinebench R15 and with the i7-5820K at 4.5 gigahertz and the Ryzen 7 1800X at its stock speed what we did was run the single core and multi-threaded test, which basically will give you good numbers to see how well the single threaded performance is on a CPU and the multi-threaded performance. So first up, the i7-5820K at 4.5 gigahertz, we get a single score of 140 CB and a multi-score of 1270, which is relatively good and relatively what I expected from the 5820K and what I have from a six core 12 thread CPU. In comes the 1800X, which for people who don't know, is an eight core 16 thread CPU with a single score of 135, a little bit less, but give or take just within margin of error, and a multi-core score of 1607 CB, which is actually quite impressive. A giant difference from the multi-core from 1270 to 1607, about a 500 point difference, which is very significant in Cinebench, really shows where this thing shines in multi-threaded performance. This is a very viable chip for multi-threaded applications and it will pretty much show throughout the rest of these benchmarks that I show you. So on to CPU-Z, a program that allows you to check out the statistics and hardware of your PC, but also has a built-in benchmark utility for, again, single and multi-threaded applications. First up, we have the i7-5820K at four gigahertz. For single core performance, we got 1806 as a score, and a, for multi-score performance, we got 12,005. For the Ryzen 7 1800X, we get a single core performance score of 2,287 and a multi score of 19,223. Now, the benchmarks might be a little bit off, but this, compared to other scores that I've seen around the internet, blows away even the 6950X. I would take that with a grain of salt because there might be some optimization issues with the Ryzen 7 1800X but still quite a very impressive feat. And I actually ran the test many times and got the same results over and over again. So it's definitely something that seems to be holding up and is really quite impressive for what the CPU is at the price tag. Again, this is a 499 CPU, which is beating up on Intel's thousand dollar offering. I think the Ryzen hype is real guys. So next up, we have PC Mark Creative, which with the i7-5820K at 4.5 gigahertz, we got a score of 4,805. Now for people who don't know anything about PC Mark, PC Mark allows you to choose different PC application, allow you to test your system to see how well it fits at certain use case. And I selected the creative application for stuff like video editing, light gaming, and things of that nature. And we wanted to see how well each CPU would perform in that task. And the i7 got a total score, which they round up all different 
performance attributes from the actual test run and got a score of 4,805, while the Ryzen 7 1800X had a score of 4,867 beating the i7-5820K. Again, optimization may make this gap a lot bigger in the future because these chips are new and they're just released on the market and hardware retailers haven't had the chance to actually optimize their programs for it. But nonetheless, this little guy is still looking very, very impressive. On to VR Mark. So this is kind of a gaming-esque task, but I mo focus mainly on the overall score and including a CPU benchmark to see how well this CPU handles VR because it is marketed as a great VR CPU to pair with something like a high-end NVIDIA card or whatever AMD's Vega lineup is gonna be. So with the numbers that we have right here, the i7-5820K at 4.5 gigahertz got a score of 5,468 and the Ryzen 7 1800X got a score of 5,407. In this case, the 5820K beat it out and that's kind of a weird number here, but I wouldn't take that for granted because there is some optimization stuff going on with the actual benchmark, the VR Mark benchmark. So I will run these tests later on down the line when I do a full roundup of gaming oriented benchmarks with all the other ones the 1700X and the 1700 which I do have on hand and we'll basically see what these numbers actually mean if they hold up in the future but nonetheless this seems to be one point for the i7 5820k as of right now. Now on to a more real world application handbrake a software that allows you to compress or change format of a video file it's very commonly used I use it a lot for changing stuff from like fraps format to a different Kodak and in this test I took a the same six minute video that I had in a saved uh, archive that I save all my videos for it was about six minutes just a 1080p video shot on my Nikon D3300 threw it in the handbrake with just a standard 1080p H.264 compression and we just measured the time to see how well it performs the i7 5820k at 4.0 gigahertz got a time of 1 minute and 48 seconds while the Ryzen 7 1800x got a time of 2 minutes and 20 22 seconds which really had me puzzled I ran the test a couple times but it seems that optimization just isn't there yet for the Ryzen 7 1800x and that could be within margin of error as well I'm not really sure it could be the video format but the systems were identical I had the Ryzen set up with a R9 390 GPU along with the i7 5820K with R9 390 GPU. The, R, the i7 5820K is overclocked, so maybe Handbrake does take advantage of higher frequencies better than the Ryzen 7 1800X. I don't know for sure about that. I could do some research on it. But without really anything here, the i7 does beat it, and that's kind of a weird number here. It just could be optimization. I don't know what that will leans towards. If you all have any ideas, comment down below for my testing methodology. Maybe I did something wrong with testing and I can rerun some tests, but it seems as if the i7 got a win here in Handbrake as of right now. Lastly, I did the TimeSpy DX12 test from 3 d Mark, which is actually a good representation of how well a CPU and overall system will handle DirectX 12. So with the i7 5820K at 4 gigahertz, we got a score of 4,073. And the Ryzen 7 1800X, we got a score of 4,211. So again, the Ryzen beats out the i7 5820K, which really brings back a very interesting point that I have to make because that's all the benchmarks I have right now. We're gonna have a little bit of a discussion. This CPU comes in at a price tag of $500. This thing, if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, don't buy Intel's offering. This is what you need to go with right now because it is a great value per dollar at only 499 bucks compared to something like Intel with like the 6900K, which you're gonna be spending thousands of dollars for. Once the optimization is there, this CPU is gonna be totally worth your money and you should be able to do a lot of creative applications with it. It would be great for gaming and the single core performance is there. That's what I want to mention is that the single core performance is on par with something like an X99 chip, which again, is not the best single core performance chip. And I do believe the 7700K still has some value over this when it comes to single threaded performance because the AMD platform that they have going on right here is still focused on multi-core performance, which really lets me down slightly because the single core scores throughout the tests that I've done have shown that they're on par with a two generation old X99 chip, which was mainly focused on multi-core performance. So until I see some numbers from the big guys who have i7 7700Ks and other CPUs that have really fast IPC, 
I really don't know what to say as far as gaming performance goes. And I'm gonna be doing a full gaming rundown with the CPU to see how well it stacks up with those numbers and maybe get a i7-7700K and how to work with those numbers. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun working with the CPU and I look forward to checking out the other ones. If you like this style of video, be sure to leave a like down below. I've been working on this review for the past week since I got it. I've been so excited to show it off. I actually used a Noctua cooler that they sent over, which I might do a review of separately. It was a pretty solid cooler, and I do have a bunch of other stuff that AMD sent over that I'll definitely check out within the following weeks. So expect a lot of Ryzen content coming up, but I definitely wanted to get this video out as the NDA lifted so you all can see that the i, not the i7, psh, this isn't even the i7, this is the Ryzen 7 1800X. It's the real deal, guys, and as long as the single threaded performance keeps up, I think we have a good winner right here from the AMD team. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you want to see specific benchmarks and other things with Ryzen, which I want to leave that up to you all, please comment down below and I'll definitely look into doing it. I'm going to get a better GPU instead of my R9 390 to throw in the system so we can have some more comparable results to other high-end YouTubers out there. And definitely check out other YouTubers like Paul's Hardware, Linus Tech Tips, all of them. They're going to have much more comparable numbers and it's an open game. So they have the actual ability to test this to the more extent than I can, but I'm here to bring you some more real world applications and tell you all if this thing is actually worth your money. And as of right now, if you're looking for the best of the best, definitely consider this. It's definitely worth your consideration. So I hope to see you all in the next one, guys. Peace out.